there was a number of people who said to you, um, have you thought about doing this? I think you're good at this. And I think Ken and I, when we're in Pathfinders and he's been with all the young kids and, and the same in his position at work and in the position that I was in, you can see people who obviously have some talents for something who don't want to do it. And you have to engineer some situation that they're the ones there that are doing it. Like we did in Pathfinders, the kids who are the biggest pains, if you can get them involved and give them, give them the compass and say, tell us which way we're supposed to go, and they've got some responsibility, then they're that's good. a turn. That's yeah. like give them a little bit, another little bit, another little bit. So um, and I was going to say to Leah, kids quite often don't say thanks very much, but they'll pretty often tell you the opposite. <laughs> I'm not interested. Oh, no, they're not there. They'll disappear. I know Christy said she's got kicked in the legs by kids in kindergarten mm -hmm. who don't don't appreciate what they like. Mm -hmm. um, but there's not many of them who'll come up and say, "You did a really good job today, teacher. Thanks very More much." But the next year. Yeah, the next yeah. year. So, but uh, yeah, I think it's important that you take notice of what other people say. Um, Ken's going to say something, and I think. Yes. I keep getting muted out, you know, nobody wants me to speak. Oh. Um, one of the other discerning things with, with people who are put in a position in where they're leading all of the time mm. is that you... You get better at it. You, oh, you get better at it, but it's always difficult because you've got to be able to show and teach in very different ways because mm. some people in the group really learn very quickly by a practical means mm. and then other people learn mm. with an administration mean mm. you know so there's touchy-feely people and there's not so touchy-feely people mm. and you have to mm. be knowledgeable enough to be able to discern that within the first 10 minutes mm. yeah. yeah appreciate so, it's 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 a very very tricky situation that God has put us into, mm. but yet we thank Him for that because mm. it helps to build us up yeah. to be more discerning people, you know. So, yeah. and in the every, every, go on. Um, I was just going to say every church situation is different too. In a smaller church, you really have to step up. And sometimes be put out of your comfort zone and do things that you don't think you're able to do. And I've always said to somebody, you've got to, mm -hmm. um, the, the more you do it, the easier it becomes and mm -hmm. you become less com conscious of yourself, but more confident in doing the things that you probably wouldn't think that you're capable of doing. And we've had to do that over the years in our church because there hasn't been the manpower just to sit back and be a pew warmer. You have to get in and get involved. Yeah. And that's the thing. So, yeah. yeah, we've been put in situations that we may not have thought we were capable of doing or but with God's help, we've been able to do that. So, yeah. You know, sometimes you find it really, really hard to lead out in church, especially if it's a topic that no matter how much you study it, you you just can't get it. And you know, I, I look at Lib and how how she struggles sometimes, but yet she's a lady who I've seen jump out of an aeroplane and be so relaxed <laughs> and so much in her comfort zone. It's unbelievable. And when she landed, I said, I couldn't do that. I can't jump out of a perfectly, perfectly good, good aeroplane. <laughs> but yet, but yet I do other things like fly hang gliders and powered hang gliders and I'm in my comfort zone there. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I was going to say that another gift which kind of really David brought to light maybe unconsciously is the gift of also finding talent, finding gifts and talents within the church. We don't always have to be the person who does it. I mean, David said you look for the people who you know are good at something you find the situation and get them involved. That is also a gift to be discerning and go, well, I need to empower this person. And you said you had leadership. That is leadership, empowering other people to serve. That's important. 
So we need to also look for ways that we can empower people because as we said, we don't, we may, there are a lot of gifts we may not have, but if we know that somebody else has it, then our responsibility is to encourage that person. So I want to end with this little bit of encouragement. Uh, because what, what I was going to say was that in my particular situation, I was fortunate enough that one of our pastors, David Edgar, he, he mentored me, right? And, and he encouraged me to do things that I didn't do before. And what I also did was I asked feedback from him uh, to, you know, whether I could improve. So over time, it progressed. But one of the things that I've also found too is that the more you put into, I guess, church, mm. is that the more you get out of it. If you don't put anything into it, you won't get much out of it. And, and this is where the involvement part of it comes in, you know, that, that there are some things you can do, other things you can't do. Mm. And it's being able to know what you can do. And, and I think that also lets you to grow as well. You know, sometimes you, you may not be able to think you can do it, but if you give it a go, you might surprise yourself, mm. you know. So, yeah. you know, and it, it's a progressive um, mm. growth uh, journey. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, things that I, you know, over years too, is that, you know, the church has been challenged by somebody and that challenge is, you know, 10 years later, it's been beneficial, <laughs> yeah. you know, and this was just the sermon that somebody presented, mm. you know, so, so, so the parts of it, you know, can be a lot uh, longer lasting than, you know, what most people think, you know, first time I went to camp, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you could absorb, but I think it's, it's the seed that's being sown that, eventually you know you can see more of it you know that it, it doesn't happen overnight it, it's just a, a continual journey and it's a growth so mm. i'll just leave it at that mm. okay all right well look i just want to share just finish on a little bit of encouragement as we sort of end and that is um i'll just skip through to the last little story that i had and that is from little house on the prairie i'm not sure if anyone has watched little house on the prairie that is a favorite it's pro pro probably before your time yes it was before my time but i love it i love it and one of the episodes i really quite enjoyed where there were two boys best friends um andrew and albert who in reality were actually brothers but Anyway, on the show, they were, they were best friends. And one of them is doing really poorly at school, so he cheats. The other boy, very, very smart, but because kids start to bully him because he's so smart and because his best friend is doing so poorly and he doesn't want to feel like he's competing, he decides to stop trying. So one cheats and the other one stops trying and they're both doing poorly. Now, the dad comes to Albert and says to him, now I found out what your friend was doing, that he was cheating. Do you think that cheating is right? He says, no, cheating is absolutely wrong. And he says, well, you need to stop cheating too. He says, but I'm not cheating. I'm not taking anybody's work. And he says, but there are different types of cheating. There's the cheating where you, where you don't live up to your potential where I know that you are a smart boy, you could be doing so much better at school, but you've stopped trying. You are cheating yourself and you are cheating others from the blessing that you could be. And in a way, it's the same thing with our spiritual gifts. When we don't give of what we have, we're cheating our church in the sense that our church could be reaping a blessing because of what we're holding back. You know, so each one of us is needed. We need someone like John who's going to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, have that counsellor kind of feel. We need someone like Tony who will serve and who will serve tirelessly. We need someone like David who will look for people to be involved. We need someone like Leah to teach. We need someone like Libby to organise, to get who, who knows all the different bits and pieces, who doesn't miss out on the detail. We need someone like Ken, who's gonna be able to work with young people. 
We need everyone and everyone's gift is valid and necessary. So my, my plea is don't cheat. <laughs> Give of what you have to the church and our church will be all the richer for it and our community will be all the richer for it too. So let's end with prayer. Um, uh, Leah, could you lead us off in prayer? Yes. All right.